Hello Wolfpack, Bitcoin is breaking down uh, as expected and has been talking about for the last few days here uh, and the reason why we're breaking down first and foremost and this is a very recent breakdown, I'm making this video basically just as it started to happen uh, is this triangle that we've been talking about for a few days. Uh, this is broken to the downside yesterday I said this triangle will be breaking within three days. It has broken, that is within three days obviously uh, and we're right now heading towards 44.5k by the time this video releases we'll probably be there at 44.5k. That is the next region of support if we manage to hold 44.5k this could be a bullish retest of support and could lead to a swing to the upside however if we lose 44.5k uh, that would be very bearish and we're looking for a daily candle closes to determine that so losing 44.5k and I, again this is not a new opinion this is what i've been saying for a long time here lose 44.5k and we're going to be going straight down in my opinion to 42k and then after that down to 39k right and then presumably we'll just break even further to the downside now we're testing it right now i'm not going to give much attention to it in this video and the reason being is because well as I said, I worry about the daily candle closes. I'm not worried about the hourly chart at this point. Uh, but what I do want to bring up before I get into any further analysis is the fact that my VIP uh, channel on Telegram, Walk Exclusive, has pulled 462% profit in the last month. We've just released those trading results. Out of the 16 trades that were activated, 15 were profitable, one was a loss. That's absolutely insane results. You're really not going to get much better than that. Uh, and we're going to be opening that group up for join. So you can join that group in around 24 hours on the pinned comment in the description below, uh, on the pinned comment, sorry, go ahead and join the information group in 24 hours. I'll be posting instructions about how to join. You will only be able to join for 24 hours. So go and check that out. Again, 460% profit in a month. That is insane. Uh, so go ahead and take advantage of that next month for sure. But without further ado, let's get further into the video here. We can see now we've actually tested 44.5K uh, here. You know, this would be good for a live stream to be honest, but you know, wrong timing. Uh, and what we actually see overall on this, again, I've been saying this for so long, uh, what we actually see overall here is, 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 is a bearish structure, okay? Uh, let's go, for example, to uh, the Binance chart, because we get a bit of a better point of view here. On the Binance chart, we can see a descending volume in an ascending channel formation, right? An ascending channel formation is a very bearish formation, breaks the downside about 75% of the time, okay? If you're comparing that and contrasting it to what we had here in, in May to July, what we actually had in May to July was some sort of a descending channel formation. So you can see we're seeing the opposite of what we saw in July. Descending channel formation broke to the upside. Ascending channel formation presumably breaks to the downside. Now, as I've said in recent days, the one thing that could stop this break to the downside is the 44.5k support zone. If we hold that, there could be a potential that we, we, we swing back to the upside here and test it again, right? But presumably, and, and going off statistics, again, this isn't my opinion. Statistically speaking, you know, let me just say that for a third time because people genuinely don't listen to this kind of thing. This isn't my opinion. Statistically speaking, this structure generally breaks the downside. And we have no reason to believe this is anything but an ascending channel formation because the volume is following through and pattern confirmation comes from the volume, right? So this is an ascending channel formation. That's a bearish pattern. Simple as that. Uh, but what we are seeing as well is a bearish MACD cross coming through that's confirmed in the last daily candle close, which is very bad to see. Uh, and again, yeah, 44.5K needs to be holding. If it does hold... That actually looks relatively bullish, but again, we have to wait and see when the next daily candle close. So let's see what happens there. But going into the hourly chart, what we can do is we can take a measured move from this triangle formation. Now it's a very big triangle, right? So realistically, a measured move would be this. Uh, and if we want to apply that to the breakdown zone, uh, I, I think this is a little bit uh, over-exaggerated here, to be honest with you, but realistically, that would be targeting around 34K. Uh, but if we want it to be a bit more realistic uh, and just, for example, take the triangle and just take it with a grain of salt and say it's something like this instead, right? A targeted move, because that's generally what it is. That's where we started actually compressing rather than just moving upwards. We can see the targeted move is going to take us to around 42K, right? Which is where that red line is. Uh, and that's kind of the next region of support below 44.4K. Um, you know, there's no guarantee we drop below 44.4K at all. I mean, we're forming a strong week of it now. No guarantee. Uh, it just would seem likely after seeing a, a triangular breakdown uh, in the sending wedge, uh, in a sending channel structure. Now, looking at the five-day chart, for example, what we can see is very similar to 2018. Uh, we saw, and again, for those of you who don't know, this whole move in general is very similar to 2018. What I can actually do is show you a fractal that's kind of signifying that. Let me get that up right now. Uh, so we can take from April 2018 through to around... Uh, let's take it to August 2018 and apply that to current price action. Now, this might be a little bit hard to apply here. 
Um, but we can see that this is a very similar move, right? You can see the similarities there. Very similar move. And, and, and you can see at the same time as the Gorgian channel flipped red in 2018, uh, it lines up with the fractal of where we are now, and that would suggest that we go down even further. Again, look, Gorgian Channel flipped red. That marked the top in, 20, in 2018. That should mark the top of this dead cat bounce here uh, in 2022 as well. So that's another bearish indicator. And then if we're flipping over to the weekly chart, you know, I don't want to just look at bearish stuff, but this is honest, honestly, to me, it's what, 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 it's what most... Sorry, it's what's most important right now. A lot of people are getting caught up in the hype, caught up in the bullishness, they don't realize we're consolidating below resistance, which is generally a sign of distribution, which is generally very bearish, right? That's just, it's not my opinion. Again, it's not my opinion. It's literally just, the, you know, the data. I'm looking at what's happening in the charts, right? Saying that an ascending channel formation is bearish is not an opinion. It's not, okay? So don't get that out of head. Don't hate me, hate the charts, you know what I mean? Um, but looking at the weekly, for example... Uh, and a lot of people would say that, hey, what about the bullish MACD cross on the weekly? Well, that's pretty simple to kind of debunk. I mean, I've just looked into why we're in a similar pattern to what we are in 2018. We've seen the fractal firsthand. I mean, you guys saw it there. In 2018, at the same time that we saw the Gorgian channel flip red, which is right now relative to current price action, we saw a bullish MACD cross, but it was flattened out by bearish price action. Again, this bullish MACD cross could very easily be flattened out by bearish price action, just like it was in 2018. And eventually, after a long period of flattening, it would lead to a crash. So again, Nothing really right now, nothing too much really right now is, is suggesting we're in any different phase in the market than we were in 2018. We also see that we saw uh, a, a kind of um, a, a doji formation, a doji candlestick formation above the 50 week before a drop below it. We have five days until that weekly candle close. If we lose the 50 week SMA, that's just another nail in the coffin for Bitcoin uh, because in 2018, we did not lose the 50. We actually rejected from the 50 week. Now we've just gotten above it and shown weakness above it. If we drop below it again, that would be basically be the same thing as a rejection. In fact, it would be even more bearish because it would be getting above it but not being able to hold it, which would be even more bearish than a rejection. So that's another thing to look at on the weekly chart there. Uh, and then, for example, we're looking at bond yields now, and we can see that, well, these things are skyrocketing, which means that interest rates are going to be risen uh, dramatically more, possibly even 50 basis points, which we haven't seen in over 20 years. Uh, and obviously, longer term, once that starts to run through the system, that would have a pretty dramatic effect uh, on, on you know, everyday, someone's everyday lifestyle, really, and how much income, disposable income they have, and hence that have, has an effect on the stock valuations because they have less money to spend uh, on companies, right? And those companies lose value. And so that could, you know, potentially drag down Bitcoin. Usually when you see something like that, and that's basically what a recession is, right? Uh, you see the DXY pump because people flock into cash for safety, uh, which is kind of counterintuitive, but I guess it makes sense because all other assets would be going down at that point. Um, and so look, now we're seeing the DXY break out of a ascending wedge formation. Uh, and also out, if we zoom out to a weekly chart, we see the DXY breaking out of a 21 year long triangle formation to the upside. The only other time we broke out, it was a fake out during the COVID crash, which meant nothing, right? So this is an actual breakout now. Uh, and this thing's taking new higher highs by the day. Everyone said, you know, a couple of weeks ago and, and leading up to this point, oh, it's going to go down. It's going to go down. I said, no, it's flipping support. It actually looks very bullish. Consolidation above support looks very bullish. And now we're forming higher highs, which is bearish for Bitcoin, right? So again, I really want to instill this point into people's brains because I know a lot of people get very frustrated with my videos for, for actually, actually just genuinely ridiculous reasons, right? I'm not saying my opinion, right? Obviously, it's my opinion, but I'm, I'm basing my opinion off of the reality, right? Ascending channel formations are bearish formations, okay? The fractal suggests we are following 2018. What happened in 2018? We went down. The four-year cycle suggests we topped out already in November, right? That, I don't know why this is so controversial with some people. You know, it's it's literally not my opinion. It's just what it is, right? For example, for a recession, you know, in recessions, risk on assets sell off. And the higher the risk, the, the faster they sell off. Bitcoin's a risk on asset. You know, we don't really know how Bitcoin's going to react to an accession, a recession, but we can assume it's going to be bad just because of that fact that I just said. So, you know, it, again, it's not, it is my opinion, but my opinion is based on the facts, right? And I've studied these facts relentlessly over the course of years, right? And, and, and you know, these are, these are shared beliefs from, from you know, master traders. These, these aren't my opinions. It's not like I'm saying I'm basing it on nothing. I've got actual statistics behind it. I know that, you know, some of the bulls would have statistics of their own. But generally speaking, a lot of the bullish argument right now, in my personal opinion, is just like, oh, well, we haven't seen a fifth Elliott wave move yet. And it's like, well, okay, that's fine. But 
Elliott wave theory is very debatable. We don't know what really constitutes a wave, right? There's no real direction as to what constitutes. And so you could say that, oh, you know, uh, you know, this was a wave here. Uh, this move wasn't a wave. You know, who's to say we didn't see the five waves right here? One, two, three, four, five, right? You know, so Elliott wave is kind of debatable. And that's why I don't like basing my, th uh, my, my facts off that. I like basing them off charting patterns and candlestick formations and volume and, and things like uh, the MACD, because those things are always consistent, but, you know, 99% of the time they're consistent. So, you know, I think that's really what we need to get into. It's not my opinions. It's kind of just what it is, right? Um, but again, you know, I'm not completely discounting the bullish argument here because I understand uh, that we are in a pre-recession rally and that generally means this, the S&P 500 moves up quite dramatically and that would obviously help Bitcoin move up, which is what's been happening this whole time, right? Um, and and 44.5K is kind of the region we're looking at uh, and it needs to hold, right? So again, I'm not confirming anything. I'm not saying we're going down yet until we lose 44.5K. That is the region. So yeah, go ahead and quote me on that one. 44.5K is the critical region here for Bitcoin. If Bitcoin holds 44.5K, that's actually extraordinarily bullish, right? But you know, that needs to hold. That's that's the one region you need to be looking at. So thanks for watching, guys. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure to check out Walk Exclusive. It's opening up in 24 hours. Uh, and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.